All right, so let's look at an example. So for this example, uh, you're an engineer handling the development of a new product. You are given the cost and the quantity of all of the parts involved in making it. Determine the total cost of the product. This is pretty simple. This is something you could just solve on a piece of paper. But we've got computers now. We got programming and we don't want to have to write this out on paper. So how are we going to do this? Well, there are many options, but one is just using an Excel spreadsheet, right? So if I look at this, if I pull this up, I can plug in this information to an Excel and then I can calculate uh, from the quantity and the price per part. I can multiply those to get the cost of that. And then I can tear this down so that for each row here, we're getting the total cost. And then I can do a sum of all of this column and I can get my number. But we're trying to do stuff in MATLAB. So how would we accomplish this in MATLAB? Well, if I just wanted the quantity uh, multiplied by the price for the first part, I would just do 10 by 100, and then that would be the cost of part one. And then you could do the cost of part two. I do 50 times one, and cost of part three. And just keep going this is a little unnecessary so you, if you went through all this you could do cost total is cost of part one plus cost of part two and i could write all this out in in going over to matlab and actually type it out but there's fast ways of doing this and we'll look at that real quick I can say, okay, well, I had quantities and those were a set of values, right? So I can store a set of values in a matrix. So I can do 10, one, if I look back here, 10, one, four, two, six, seven, 100, 250, 2, 1, 11. So if I go to my Excel, I can actually go here and copy Control C this quantity. Uh, so just select all of the values going into quantity and go right back here. It'll be really easy for me to just paste it right in here. Now, if I run this and see quantities, I'll do it clear CLC, run this quantities, it's a 11 by 1 matrix. So I can fit those all in there and I can do the exact same with cost per part. Go back to my Excel here, copy this to MATLAB and paste it here. And I don't want the dollar sign. So if I go here, I can Copy, paste in another row here. I'll just copy the formatting of this. Now I just have numbers. Copy that, go back into MATLAB and paste right here. And now I have the cost per part. And if you look, it's something you may find confusing. So the cost per part, if I look at the last value here, it should be 1,145, but it shows 1.145. Well, that's because my formatting is such that if I, if I switch the formatting to long, and then I call up cost per part, just do tab to, I'd autofill that. It'll do this. But if I do format rat, 
now I can see it'll give me fractions. So the way it's displaying it, right, I can change the format to something that's easier for me to use. I'll go to format short G and cost per part, and that's probably what I want to see. So I will go ahead and suppress these. And let's see, how would I do that cost of parts and quantity? So cost of parts in quantity would be quantities and then dot multiply because I just want every element to be multiplied by every element in here. So quantities multiply by cost per part. And now when I run this, I will get that cost of parts and quantity from the Excel. And it's just multiplying that quantity of this part 10 multiplied by 100 to get 1000 uh, for each of the parts, right? So this gives me the cost of parts and quantity. But I want the total cost. So how am I going to accomplish that? Well, the other option we were looking at, we looked at dot multiply, right? But what about normal multiply? Would that be able to give me anything here? Well, if you remember, if you multiply matrices together, if you have A, B, C, going on and A2, B2, C2. If you go like this, then if you were to matrix multiply these two, so these are not the same size, you're not dot asterisk element by element multiplying, you're doing, if you do a matrix multiplication of this, then you can do A multiplied by A2, B multiplied by B2, C multiplied by C2, and it will actually return A multiplied by A2 plus B multiplied by B2 plus C multiplied by C2 plus, and just keep going ahead, right? So yeah, so I can, uh, I can use this and I can check with my Excel from before. So I should be getting 14,000 at the end of this. Let's go back to MATLAB and I can say total cost, total cost equals. And if I go back to my notes, when I in this, I had to transform it so that the quantity, if I want to multiply the quantity by the price per part, the quantity has to be a row vector and the price per part has to be a column vector. So the way I can do this is I, I have to do the transpose of the quantity. So I'll go quantity, quantities, and then transpose it multiplied by the cost per part. And I'll tab to auto-complete that. Now, when I run this, I indeed get 14,024. And that's because I'm in format short G, but format long by total cost, uh, it indeed just rounded. So to summarize real quick, we were able to use two new tools, the matrix dot multiplication and matrix multiplication in order to multiply element by element to get the cost of each group of parts. And we were able to use matrix multiplication in order to get the sum of all of them multiplied with each other. So this is an example where you might use MATLAB in order to approach solving a problem you might have. Um, and one of the reasons you would choose MATLAB over going the Excel route, like we started out with is because with MATLAB, it's easy to automate with programming in general, it's easy to automate. Whereas with Excel, you'd have to go and 
fill in all this data yourself. A lot of times when you're collecting data, it's just automated and you can, with MATLAB, pull in that data and then perform the computations on it and have it all automated.